Welcome back. This step is going to be about the foliage tool again, and we're going to get some bushes and trees into our environment. So let's get stuck in. We need to bring those assets in. We're going to be using fab again for this. So let's get fab opened up. And the thing we're going to search for this time is dead tree. And there are a couple of good ones in here. As long as they're free, choose whatever you want. I'm going to use the Quixel one. So this first one I really like. So I'm going to add this one. And I'm going to put this one in at medium quality and add to project. There we go. That one's now imported. And we will find one more. I quite like this thick one. So I'm just going to get the second one. That's nice. What I might do for this one is just check the 3D view. We've not looked at that yet. But I feel like that image is cutting it off. So let's see what it looks like when we view the actual model. Oh yeah, that's actually got quite a lot of detail to it when you can view the model. So we'll add to project, medium quality again. So we've got those two. You could leave it there if you want, but that I want something that's going to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm going to add some bushes as well. And the way I'm going to search for this one is I'm going to look for an Old West product on here. So if I type Old West, and I'm just going to set this to be free. And then it's this Old West Volume 7 foliage that I want. So I'm just going to click on this. Now, there are no um, quality settings for this one because this is actually not created by Epic uh, and Megascans. This is by uh, Decagon Studios, who very nicely allow people to use this for free. So that's very nice. OK, so what we're going to do is just add this to project. This is quite a big download and it'll take a little bit longer than the others. Uh, but it does include more than what we're going to use. But we don't, we can't choose just the bits we want. We've got to download the whole pack. So you've got to be patient. But then when that's done, we'll be able to choose which bushes and plants we want and make an interesting environment. And my download is now finally finished. I think it took a little bit more than five minutes. But I've now got everything I need to get this plant life going on in my environment. So we can close Fab down again and we'll set up our foliage tool. So, we need to open the foliage tool. There it is, back into foliage mode. Now, here's what we need to do. You can see that the grass is still there. We can't remove that. That needs to stay there for this grass to stay there. So, what we do is we remove the tick or the check mark from each one of those so that nothing that we do now will happen to the grass. That won't be painted anymore. So, that's part one. Next, we need to get the trees in there. So let me just see where that will have gone. Is it in 3D? It is. So we've got dead tree here. And I'm just going to drop that in there. So that's the first one. And then we'll find another dead tree. And we'll drop that in there too. And then I'm going to go back up to the content level because this is going to be in a different place. So everything so far has gone in the fab folder. But because the old west is a different thing, it's, we, it came to us through fab, but it's not provided by um, Unreal Engine. It goes into a different folder, basically, so it's just their Old West. So I'm going to open that up, go into Volume 7 and into Meshes, and then we've got all of these guys here. Now, you can choose whatever plants you want. I'm going to choose these three dead-looking juniper bushes. They make me happy. So I'm just going to drag those three in as well. And then I'm just going to make sure that these are all selected. And you can see these all have zero because I've not got any instances of these in yet. I've got about one and a half thousand of each type of grass. But they're turned off. And then I'm going to dial in my settings. So if I now just click, I can see that that's far too dense. I don't want that many all in one place. So I'll undo that. And that tells me that I need a lower density. So I'm going to change my density to 0 0.1. And then if I click, nothing happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get a much bigger brush and click again. And you can see now I've got a bush and I've got a tree. So that is now much more sparing. And I know that I like that value because I've got it written down. So it must be good. So I'm happy with that density. I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.5 and 1.3. So that's going to add in some randomness. And then I'm looking for a line to normal. This means so your normals are kind of slopes. And it's going to align to those. So if we've got a slope, the tree's going to stick out of it. There you go. Can, can you see me doing that? I want that on, but I'm going to change the slope angle. So the max is 45. I'm going to change that to 35. And that will just mean that if the gradient is any more than 35 degrees, it won't be able to put any foliage there. 
We also want to make sure that Cast Shadow is on, because we do want these to cast shadows. And we also need to make sure that Collision is on. So I'm going to change this to Block All, because we don't want our player to run through these bushes or through these trees. These are actually going to be like obstacles. Okay, so now I'm going to get a bit of a higher view. I'm going to get a bigger brush, and I don't need to be too careful about where I paint. I kind of want these to go up on the edges where it can. So I'm just going to click there and click there. And you can see this is now kind of putting things everywhere and I'm just letting it letting them go wherever the heck they want there we go you see by default everything is being quite sparingly placed because of those settings and we just want this to look interesting to the player so I'm just moving around finding places that don't have much going on and I can always come in later and delete these if they don't look good I just want it to look more interesting. So let's see what this looks like to the player now. So you can see that that tree growing out of there, that looks cool. I'm leaving that. We've got things going on up there. That makes the world feel bigger, like there's something outside of this canyon. If we drop down, there's nothing immediately in the way. And then if we run into a tree, we can't get through it because collisions are on. Same for the bushes. So that all works. That's brilliant. Now here... I don't like this. There are too many obstacles. The player's got to be able to run through this. So I'm going to bring my brush size down. I'm going to hold shift and just get rid of some of these that are getting a bit too much in the way. And then we'll just test again. So once you feel like you're happy that you can run through the level without things getting in the way, but with things looking more interesting, then we can call this stage done. So I think this looks okay. Yeah, that all looks nice and interesting. Got grass, got bushes. Oh, I feel like I'm out for a walk in nature. This is delightful. Yep, that all looks okay. I like it when they hug. Look at that one. It's just like hugging the shade. Oh, good bush. And then we'll just check around here. Make sure that this feels good. Yeah. Yep, I'm happy with that. So we've now got our trees in there as well. So that will do it for this step. In the next step, we're going to add in a crashed spaceship. This is going to be um, what the player is leaving from level one. They've woken up or the player starts. They have to get out of the crashed spaceship before it explodes. Uh, and this is going to be them exiting that spaceship and then dropping down off of that shelf into the main valley. So I'll see you in the next step where we're going to make the, uh, the spaceship be there. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.